Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Michelle. I am 31 years old and I've been living with type 1 diabetes for almost 19 years now. And this is a diabetes lifestyle channel. I make lots of different types of videos on here. One of those being vlogs, which is what today is. I'm going to do a vlog of a new mom with type 1 diabetes because I just had a baby two months ago. My daughter Eden is two months old. She is so sweet. Newborns are quite unpredictable so she doesn't have a schedule yet. Life is a little bit chaotic. Every day is a little different even though we're trying to create a routine it's been challenging and it's also been challenging managing my diabetes with caring for a two-month-old baby because she's my priority now so my diabetes has definitely taken a back seat which is okay i had such super super tight control for my whole pregnancy and that's just not sustainable for anyone really let alone someone with a new baby so i've had to let go a bit but all that matters is that i still have decent control i feel well i'm healthy the baby's healthy and all of that is true this morning i am running at 8.5 when i was pregnant that would have been a no-no i would have had to go out for a walk and bring that down right away but since i'm not pregnant anymore i'm gonna kind of ride it out. I did just eat breakfast. I have active insulin on board. It will probably come down. There's no rush to bring it down. I do have control IQ on my insulin pump. I know I mentioned in a previous vlog that I wasn't able to get it because I was pregnant and my diabetes team advised against getting it while pregnant, but I downloaded it two weeks after giving birth and it has been very helpful during this time because I honestly don't have much time to focus on diabetes right now when I'm caring for a baby. So it has helped me stay in decent range. And honestly, I don't think I would have as good control if I didn't have this. In today's vlog, I just kind of want to show what life is like managing diabetes with a two month old baby. She does sleep well, luckily at night. She sleeps seven to eight hour stretches at night, which is amazing. And she sleeps I don't know if you can see behind us there in that bassinet, but during the day, she is a horrible sleeper. <laughs> she does not nap well. It's very hard to get her to sleep, but this morning, my husband has managed to put her to sleep. She is in the other room, sleeping in her swing. We are trying to be super quiet so that we don't wake her up because she does not sleep much during the day. So it's almost 10 o'clock in the morning. I've managed to get myself ready today, which doesn't always happen, I can tell you that. I have a endocrinologist appointment on the phone at 10.45. It's my first endocrinologist appointment back at my regular diabetes clinic not the pregnancy one so we just did some blood work and i think it's just a quick touch base checkup i'm just hoping that the baby is good during then because my husband will be working so i will have her and i hope she doesn't cry i honestly feel like i have so much to say i could make this introduction 10 minutes long but i'm just gonna go and then i will fill you in on the rest of my postpartum journey throughout this vlog so I hope you all enjoy and it's nice to be back. Okay, since the baby's sleeping, I'm gonna take this opportunity and read, which I don't do often. I'm reading The Husband's Secret. I don't know, it's good. It's, it's an entertaining book. I actually started this when I was pregnant and I never finished it and I just haven't had time, but since I have some time this morning, this is so precious, I'm gonna take some time, sit beside the baby in her swing and read. Miss is up now. We are going to go change her diaper and get her dressed for the day. She's a little bit fussy right now. Maybe give her a bottle. And my appointment's in 10 minutes, so hopefully um, that aligns okay. Okay, so we have now done diaper change, we've dressed her for the day, and now we're doing a bottle. I guess I haven't mentioned anything about my breastfeeding journey. I don't really want to go into too much detail about it because unfortunately there's, I don't know, a lot of judgment about breastfeeding and how you feed your baby, which I really don't like. So I'll just let you guys know that I'm mainly giving Eden breast milk. This is breast milk in the bottle. I do a lot of pumping. I did have a lot of issues at the beginning with breastfeeding. So we've found what works for us now after a lot of trial and error. I breastfeed Eden directly once a day 
first thing in the morning. It's kind of like our little routine. And then for the rest of the day, I pump and we give her breast milk in a bottle because then Rafi can help me out and it's just what works for us. And then we do um, give some formula as well because I don't always make enough milk, but it's working well. She's healthy, she's growing, and that's all that really matters. My endocrinologist is late calling, but that's like very common. They usually don't call on time for a phone appointment, but now would be a great time for her to call because I am just sitting here feeding the baby so I could take the call on speaker. So fingers crossed that she calls soon. All done the feed and still no phone. Phone call and as I predicted my blood sugar did come down you can see that control IQ is in effect the yellow B in the upper right corner means that my basal rate has been reduced to prevent my blood sugar from dropping okay so Eden just fell asleep after I fed her so I just let her sleep because I figured it's for the best since I'm still waiting on my endocrinologist appointment this morning and then I'll do some active time with her this afternoon on her play mat so as you can see my blood sugar has been trending down the whole morning and my control IQ is really had to come into play here to keep myself from going low. So clearly something needs to be done because this has been happening the past few days and it is 11.20. My last bolus for breakfast was at 8.20, so that's three hours after. So most likely this is a basal issue rather than mealtime insulin issue. So I'm gonna go in to my pump here and maybe just tweak my basal rate in the morning so so it would be this one around here the 8 a.m one that needs to come down uh, i think i might decrease that to just 0.45 rather than 0.475 i mean it might not make a difference but it might just take the edge off so let's try and we'll see and please remember even though i'm showing you what my basal rate is that's my personal medical need for my own body if your basal rate is different, that doesn't mean it's wrong. I always feel like I have to say this because there's just way too much comparison with insulin doses and there really shouldn't be because everybody is different. Everybody needs a different amount of insulin. So just always remember that when you're watching my videos. <laughs> a little half hour nap which is honestly so good for her she's been a really good sleeper this morning compared to how she normally is and i'm still waiting on my phone call and honestly i'm getting a little bit annoyed because it's like an hour and a half past when they were supposed to call and like i understand they're busy but it's really hard for me like as a new mom with my baby here oh she's talking to me it's really hard for me as a new mom with my baby to take an appointment and my husband's working so he can't really help out this morning and i feel like i'm just kind of like waiting around for her to call and on edge because i want to make sure the baby is not crying when she calls do any of your endocrinology clinics do the same thing do they do phone calls where you have to wait for hours for the phone call let me know in the comments down below. I don't know if this is just something my clinic does or if it's common during COVID, but let me know. My husband is on his lunch break now, so we are going to have lunch and I'm gonna bowl us for that. We're having sunchoke soup and some buns. So I know that that is about 35 grams of carbs altogether. And then I also pump during lunchtime because my husband is free to watch the baby. I had my appointment, finally. She actually called while I was pumping, so it worked out well, but she called at 1.15 and my appointment was at 10.45. So two and a half hours late. And honestly, I don't normally kvetch on this channel, but here I go. I just like don't understand how that is workable for many different people. Like for me as a mom with a little baby, for people who work a nine to five and have to book off a time to take the phone call. I just don't know, but I'm not a big fan of these phone appointments. It was literally a two minute appointment and that's it. So I waited two and a half hours for a two minute appointment. <laughs> but overall the appointment went well. She's really happy with my current A1C, especially post-pregnancy. She just pretty much said, keep up the good work. Also I had my urine tested because after pregnancy I had protein in my urine, which can be a sign of some kidney issues in people with diabetes. So it kind of scared me. But after talking to my OB and my pregnancy endocrinologist, they said, don't worry, it's actually completely normal to leak some protein into your urine after giving birth. So we just kind of waited it out and then I tested again in two months and the protein's gone. So good news, like huge relief because that actually really 
made me anxious. We are gonna go on a walk after this little lady's next feed and we will see where we end up. I think I wanna go get a pumpkin spice latte because it's fall, it's October. I haven't gotten one yet. I'm not one who typically goes to Starbucks. I usually go to like independent cafes around the neighborhood, but this time I'm really feeling like the OG PSL. I'm gonna be basic like that. So I'm out for a walk with Eden and my blood sugar is crashing, of course. So I had to stop to drink some juice because the last thing I want to do is go low while I have the baby. She depends on me. I take care of her, so I need to be okay to take care of her. So I really watch my blood sugar when I'm out. I'm not low yet, but I can see that I will go low if I don't have juice. So I'm treating preemptively so that a low doesn't happen. And then I'm just going to sit on a bench here and wait it out until I am totally okay to walk because you know, just playing it safe since I'm a mom now. Hello, I am back. I feel like I'm sitting down about to read you all a story. My blood sugar has been really good, honestly. Just, I think it's luck, but 5.5 and stable. I avoided that low just by taking a little sip of juice. Oh, honey. I've got a fussy baby. <laughs> I think she's overtired because she hasn't napped all afternoon. So I'm trying to get her to sleep now by rocking her. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to just sit down and chat for a second about balancing type 1 diabetes with motherhood. It's already challenging enough to have a baby on your own with no help during the day, let alone add on a chronic condition. It's really hard. So for example, I really need to change my Dexcom site sometime like later this afternoon or evening and I will definitely have to wait until my husband's done work so that he can watch Eden because she's kind of on team no sleep this afternoon. If she's having a fussy day, it's really hard for me to get things done diabetes wise. So maybe my insulin pump site will go an extra day being changed. That kind of stuff has been happening ever since I've had her and that's okay. I'm still learning to balance and I'm sure I'll get into the swing of things as she gets older. But I just wanted to come on here and say like to any new mom that is managing any sort of health condition at the same time, you are not alone. It is hard, but you can do it. And just another little health update because I forgot to tell you after my appointment with my endocrinologist, but as you may recall, I have Hashimoto's disease, which means my immune system's attacking my thyroid. I was put on Synthroid, so that's a medication for hypothyroidism. And I am actually off the medication now because my thyroid levels are completely stable on their own. So I'm not taking medication. I still technically have Hashimoto since I do have the antibodies, but for now I'm medication free and we're just gonna keep monitoring it. <laughs> It is the end of the workday, so Rafi has the baby downstairs, and I'm about to start a ballet class in my little makeshift ballet studio here in my attic. For those of you who were around during my peak pandemic day vlogs in 2020, you know that I did a lot of ballet virtually on Zoom here in my attic. So I'm back to it pretty much as soon as I was cleared by my doctor at six weeks, I started ballet again. I didn't really do it when I was pregnant. I aim to do ballet once a week. It doesn't always happen, but I'm trying. I used to take my insulin pump off for ballet, but I'm starting to keep it on now. I have it clipped to me. And now that I use Control IQ, I put it in activity mode. But yeah, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I didn't really film every everything I was doing and like everything I was eating. Normally my vlogs would be a little bit more diabetes focused, but honestly, it was really hard to film with a baby. This is my first time doing it. So I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. I'm happy to be back with vlogs and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.